You know, subhanallah, we have such a blessed gift of Allah. Such a blessed gift known as sickness. Did you ever know that sickness is a gift? It's one of the few things that instantly draws you close to Allah. Instantly. You have no option, especially when medicine has given up. Then you realize I need to develop a link with my maker. That's a gift of Allah. If that is what caused you to earn paradise, trust me, it was the best thing that could have happened to you. May Allah grant us cure. Some people never read Salah, never ever. The day they cannot move anymore, they want to read Salah while sitting. Alhamdulillah, beautiful. At least now you're reading Salah, even though you're now sitting. Subhanallah, even though you're now sitting, but at least you're reading Salah. It's a gift of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala watches you. He sees you are ill. He sees you are sick. That's a gift of Allah. He knows he made you that way because he loves you. Subhanallah. He made you that way because he loves you. And this is why the hadith says, In Allah idha ahabba abdan ibtala. When Allah loves a worshiper, he tests him. He gives him more tests. So Allah tests you. Allah will test you. Then you start crying to Allah helplessly. And then you turn to Allah. And obviously there are two things that can happen. When you are sick and ill, shaitan can get hold of you. Or spirituality can get hold of you. Religiousness can get hold of you. So you need to be careful. It's like treading a tightrope. You know, you will have someone who looks like a religious person and he tells you, hey, I can cure you. So you say, okay, cure is in the hands of Allah. That's obviously the... But let's see what you have to say. So if they are giving you, for example, some herbal medication, or they are giving you zamzam, or they are giving you honey, and uh, for example, the black seed, and these things that are beneficial, various other items, or they give you a diet to tell you, you know what, uh, try and uh, abstain from this type of food, and try and eat this type, it's high in mineral and vitamin and so on. Alhamdulillah, we understand it. But the minute they tell you, listen, stand on your left foot for three minutes, and start looking up in the sky, and hold five leaves on the right hand, and, and then you put, tell someone to put a piece of lemon into your mouth and do that five times a day. You need to know that is shaitan, complete shaitan. Allah is going to ask you. That is the devil, wallahi. You need to know this, where did they come from? This is nothing that makes sense. It's not medication. It's not herbal medication. This is superstition. This is the devil. No matter what the person who gave you this looks like, it's wrong. You need to have common logical sense that this is unacceptable. This is Allah. He's going to ask you about this gift. So at the same time, like I said, your heart becomes softened and you turn to Allah. So now we cry. So our salah, we don't miss. Isn't it? Because why? We have a problem. And then what happens when you have a major issue? Subhanallah. You get up a little bit earlier than Salatul Fajr for another salah known as Tahajjud. Isn't it? We are up very early. And you say, sister, or if your husband says, hey wifey, why are you up so early? You know I have a problem, subhanallah. So that's why I'm up. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. I'm up very early and we cry to Allah. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it very, very beautifully clear where he says in Surah Fussilat, verse number 51, وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الشَّرُّ فَذُو دُعَاءٍ عَرِيضٍ When we have blessed man with all the gifts, he turns away, he forgets us. You have nothing missing in your life, absolutely nothing. Your health is okay, your wealth is okay, your children are okay, your work is okay, your, your salary is okay. Uh, your, your situation is okay. Everything is beautiful. You're enjoying eating out every other day. You have a holiday. You know, everywhere you want to go, you've gone and so on. And you still keep on going and everything is growing. And what's the point of knowing Allah? A lot of people would say, what's the point of knowing Allah? That is the time you're supposed to get closer to Allah. The winner is the one who has the dunya and the akhirah. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah explains to us this dua, beautiful dua. Oh Allah, grant us that which is goodness in this world and goodness in the next and safeguard us from the punishment of the fire. 
So that is the beauty. You want goodness here and there. That is obviously not everyone will get this, but that is the ultimate gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you have subhanallah, an issue, and that is quite normal to have issues, problems, difficulties, learn to turn to Allah and Allah alone. It is when things go wrong that people begin to make supplications, long dua, prolonged, subhanallah. You know, if you see, if you see a man walking in the masjid and he sits in the masjid, subhanallah, and he asks Allah, and you find him after salah, he's sitting there after salatul asr, and he's, you know, he's raising his hands or he's crying to Allah. And you find when you go for salatul maghrib, he's sitting in the same place. He is sitting in the same place. He is sitting in the same place and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What do you think? You think this man's got a big problem. He's sitting in exactly the same spot and he's asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is the description in Surah Fussilat, the verse that I read, where Allah says, when we have bestowed upon man, when we have given him, he turns away. He turns away on his side. And when evil befalls him, he makes prolonged prayer, prolonged prayer. Now you tell me spiritually, which is a better condition? Is it better to turn away or is it better to be engaged in prolonged prayer? So what is the gift of Allah here for us? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. You know, I always used to think when I was young that why is it that only old people are become sick and invalid? You know, when you're old, you become a little bit, you know, you find it a little bit more difficult to walk. May Allah grant shifa and cure to all those who are sick and ill. Amen. And then sometimes you cannot walk and then you have to sit down and then you become old and then we die, we pass away. Okay. Why is it that Allah has kept it such that the older people, the old, why isn't in the middle of your life, he would have just kept a few years that, okay, now you're sick and ill and then you're healthy once again. It is Allah's gift that when you get old, you start suffering pain so that you start turning to Allah so that you prepare for the day you will meet with him. Subhanallah. It's amazing. Now you also, now you know that I'm going. You know it, it's a fact. Why? Because you're old, things change, everything happens and everything starts moving in a direction that keeps on reminding you, I'm no longer the little teenager I used to be. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to thank Him for His gifts.